Hi everyone. Today our goal is to formalize all of the characteristics of quadratic equations and graphs that we looked at in class today. Just a reminder before we begin the video, uh, make sure to look at my steps to successful video learning. Um, specifically, make sure you summarize your key points and write down questions you have so we can have a discussion about the video in class. First question that we all may want to know is what is a quadratic? And a quadratic means very many different things. What we looked at in class is a quadratic is a parabola of some sort. Okay, so we looked at this basketball context. I drew a rough sketch of what the parabola would look like here. Um, this is an example of a quadratic graph. Okay, so a quadratic in, in part of the definition is just a parabola. Okay, it is also some equation with the x squared as its highest term. Okay, which we've all seen before, but I just wanted to remind you. Okay, the next question that we started to kind of look at in class, but may or may not have time in every group to go through, is how we write quadratic equations. Now, in class, we looked at this particular context, and you had a parabola, and we wanted to know if it was going to go in or not. Okay, so we came up with a lot of different ideas, um, but one of the most concrete ways of figuring out whether or not the ball is going to go in is to come up with a quadratic equation that describes this graph. In order to do that, um, you're going to have to think you know, what points do I need to define a quadratic? So you first look at this picture, and it turns out, you know, I could draw a whole bunch of different graphs that go through this one point here. Um, so is it enough to have one coordinate to write a quadratic? No, it's not. Okay, so most groups are requested then to have a whole bunch of points so you can get an outline of the shape of the parabola. Now specifically, you're going to need more than one point, um, but there are some very distinct points of parabolas that we want to work with. Okay, one of those points is the vertex, which would be either the maximum height of the ball in this case, or it could also be the lowest point of a parabola if it looks something like this. Some other distinctive points are the x-intercepts, maybe even the y-intercept would be helpful, um, or you know, any points on the parabola will be helpful to finding the equations. So let's just give this context some numbers. Now I'm not saying these are the exact perfect ones, I just kind of made some estimates. And let's say our vertex here has a maximum height of 15, I don't know, feet high. That would be our y value is 15. And then as far as, you know, on the x-axis, let's say we're at um, 3 feet in, 15 feet up. Okay, this may not be perfect, but I'm just going to try and estimate. And let's say if we drew a parabola with this particular coordinate plane, that this point is negative 1, 0 as our x-intercept over here. And at this point is, let's say, 7, 0. Okay, so remember the vertex is the halfway point between the parabola. So if this is negative 1, it's 4 units away from our vertex. And 4 more units away from 3 will get us to 7. Okay, so those are our two intercepts and our vertex. How can these help us write a quadratic equation? Going back to the notes, uh, there are three forms of a quadratic equation. The first one is vertex form, then we have factored form, and finally we have standard form. So vertex form should look somewhat familiar, um, even though you may or may not have thought about this in class. When we looked at function transformations, we learned that our minus h, um, or when you subtract h from x, is going to move horizontally. Um, but what lies inside lies to you, so you're going to move the opposite of what you see. And our k is going to move us up or down. Okay, so our k is going to move us on the y-axis. Our a then was the factor that told us which way the graph was facing and if it was narrow or wide and all the other information. So that's what we looked at in chapter one. What we want to look at now is how can we write a quadratic equation in vertex form. Now the good news is the name of this tells you what information you need. Okay, if it's vertex form, you need the vertex to write this equation. So I'm going to use our parabola example, example and say that our vertex is 315. Okay, so think about this in terms of transformations. Every parabola starts at 0, 0, and then these shifts move it up, down, left, right, so on and so forth. So if our vertex is at 315, that means we move to the right 3 and up 15 from 0, 0. Okay, so as far as moving to the right, that's talking about our x shift. Um, so this will really become x minus 3. Okay, what lies inside lies to you, so though it says minus 3, we're going to move to the right. Okay, then our k tells us we're moving up 15, so we're going to add 15. 
Uh, and then we don't know our a at this point. Now, if you don't know your a, we need to figure out a way we can find a. Okay, so if you want to solve for a variable, we only know how to solve one variable equation. So you're going to need to find a way to fill in the y and the x. Now, how can you fill in the y and the x given some points on this parabola? Okay, the answer is you can just pick a point that you know to be on the graph and go ahead and plug it in to your equation. Now, you can pick whatever point you want that's on the parabola. Um, if we're talking in terms of our context, I know that one of my points on that parabola is negative 1, 0. So I could just plug in 0 for y, and I could plug in negative 1 for x, and solve for my a. So if I do that, I get 0 equals a times negative 4 squared plus 15. And our goal is to isolate a so we get that value that multiplies our vertex and creates fat, skinny, upside down, right side up, whatever it may be. Okay, so if we solve for that, we get 0 equals 16a plus 15. Okay, subtract your 15 from both sides, we get negative 15 equals 16a. And divide both sides by 16, we get a equals negative 15 over 16. Okay, so now we have the formula for parabola in vertex form. Our a value is negative 15 over 16, which if you think about it, um, is a good check that this makes sense. Since our parabola is facing upside down, uh, we do have to multiply by negative, so we'd have to have a negative 15, 6. Okay, so I have an idea that I did this right. Okay, now we still have our vertex as x minus 3 squared plus 15, and we have written the equation for parabola. Okay, so that's vertex form. Our next one's called factored form, and I'm just going to erase this over here, so make sure you've paused and written that down. So our factored form looks something like this, and hopefully this looks familiar from all the solving we've done this chapter. Kind of looks like when we had an equation that was x plus 3 times x minus 1 equals 0, and you solved for the zeros, which we sometimes call factors as well. Okay, so in order to get into factored form, um, you're going to need the zeros or the x-intercepts. Okay, and if you want to go from one form to another, you can think factoring will come into play, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, so you're going to need your x-intercepts for factored form. So our x-intercepts are negative 1, 0, and 7, 0 in terms of my problem that I wrote on the other sheet. Now, really, this is saying x equals negative 1 and x equals 7. So what we need to do to write in factor form is go backwards from the zero product property. Okay, so before, if you had an equation like this, you would set x plus 3 is equal to 0 to get x equals negative 3. Okay, which is kind of similar to these equations we've written here. Um, but now we want to write it in this form. So what we need to do is we need to go backwards from our x-intercepts to our factored form. So what you're going to try to do is, okay, you know, normally I would set it equal to 0 and then subtract 3 from both sides. Now I want to get it backwards and set equal to 0. So to get this equal to 0, I have to add 1 to both sides. And you get x plus 1 equals 0. Same thing here, you have to subtract 7 to get it set equal to 0, and you'll have x minus 7 equals 0. So our two factors of our factored form are x plus 1 and x minus 7. Now we still have our a and we still have our y. Um, so you can solve for your a value very similar, similar to how we did in vertex form by plugging in some sort of coordinate here. Okay, so we could plug in our vertex, for example, and solve for a. But you can practice on your own. Something to note is you're using a in both factored form and vertex form. Um, your a value should always be the same. So you can go ahead and try plugging in a point and see if you get the same a value. Okay, last form we have a standard form, which we've seen very frequently, is something like the equation y equals x squared plus 4x minus 12, to go out of context of the basketball form in it. Now, standard form, you can't look at this and say, what's the vertex and what's the x-intercept, like you can do in these two forms here. But we can always try to change standard form into vertex or factored form. Um, sometimes it's possible, sometimes it's not. So let's just see what we would do if it's possible. To change into factored form, well, it gives you the hint of what you should do in the name. You're going to have to factor. So, for example, this one would factor to be x minus 2 and x plus 6. Okay, you can check that if you don't trust me. Now, this one, the a value is just 1, um, but I just want to give you an easy example to see how you go back and forth between the forms. Okay, to change it into vertex form, if you look at vertex form, you're going to need some quantity squared. Um, so how do we create a binomial squared? Uh, the answer is you're going to have to complete the square. 
So if we complete the square, um, and we're just going to try it on this equation, first thing you're going to have to do is move your constant over. So if it's minus 12, we're going to have to have plus 12 on the other side. And then you're going to take your half of b, which is 2, and square it, which will give you plus 4. So now we have a perfect squared trinomial, um, and this should be an x squared. We can go ahead and factor that to be x plus 2 squared equals, well, y plus 12 or 12 plus y. It doesn't really matter the order. Okay, so now we can subtract 12 from both sides, and we get y equals x plus 2 squared minus 12. Again, the a value is 1. Notice the a values match in our factored form and our vertex form. So to go from standard form to factored form, you have to factor. To go from standard form to vertex form, you'll have to complete the square. Things to think about. Now, I bet some of you are saying, Miss Mancini, what if I can't factor or complete the square? How will I find the x-intercepts or the vertex? The answer is, you know, if you have a quadratic in standard form, you can always apply the quadratic formula to find the x-intercepts. That's the good news. As far as finding the vertex goes, um, if you can't put it in vertex form, and let's say you can't use your graphing calculator, how might we find the vertex? And the answer is the vertex of a parabola, um, if the parabola is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, or standard form, can be calculated by this formula, negative b over 2a and f of negative b over 2a. Okay, so let's use this example and see what this means. So say you have y equals x squared minus 4x minus 12, plus 4x, excuse me. Okay, you're going to try and find your a, b, and c values and plug them in and see what your vertex is. So in this problem, our a is 1, our b is 4, and our c is negative 12. So plugging that into our vertex formula, okay, we're going to have negative b over 2a, which is 2 times 1. Um, and, and let's actually just start with our coordinate here. So this is our x-coordinate. If you simplify that, you're going to get negative 2. Now what f of negative b over 2a says is that this is your input, and you're going to plug it into f. So if negative 2 is my input, I'm going to take that and plug it into my function, which in this case I wrote as an equation. Um, so you're just going to plug in negative 2 for your x value. So this becomes y equals negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2 minus 12. Okay, go ahead and simplify that. I'll come back with the answer. Okay, once you simplify that, you get your y coordinate is negative 16. So our vertex would be negative 2, negative 16. Now, when we completed the square, I see that my x-coordinate and my vertex is negative 2, but my y-coordinate is negative 12. Since this is the same equation, our vertex should match. Which one's right? Which one's wrong? Um, you can use your graphing calculator to kind of determine that. Um, but also, I want you to find my mistake in this problem. Why did I get two different y-coordinates? I want you to think about the processes I went through and come up with an answer to discuss in class. Last question we need to discuss is how we sketch the graph of a quadratic. All of these tools will be helpful to finding important information about those quadratic functions. So let's say you use those tools and you found the vertex is, once again, 315. You found the x-intercepts are at negative 1 and 7. Okay, you can use these points to get the sketch of a graph. Okay, so let's say 315 is up here. This should look familiar. Negative 1 is down here and 7 is over here. Once we have a couple points, we can then go ahead and draw a sketch of the parabola. Okay, so there's only one parabola you can draw through these points. Now, once we do that, um, what do we know about the parabola? Okay, we know all parabolas are symmetrical over the y-axis, but in this case, we are shifted over. So this parabola is actually symmetric everywhere where your x value is 3. Okay, so x is 3 here, 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 so on and so forth. So this is called the axis of symmetry. And if we're writing an axis of symmetry, we're talking about a line. Um, and this line is at x equals 3. The other things you can tell me about this graph are um, where this function is increasing and decreasing, just like we talked about in our last units, domain and range. All those things will come into play here. Okay, so increasing, remember, I kind of read it like a book. Start from the left, it's going up. So it's increasing on this interval. Um, from wherever x is down here to x is up here. Decreasing would be on this side. Um, domain talks about your x. Range talks about your y. We're going to revisit all of these things as we talk about quadratics in the next few days. Okay, so please come with questions. This is a lot of information, and we will do some more practice in class. Have a good night.